Hey, everyone, we're back. It's day three here at the 6.5 Summit. Thanks all for being with us. We're in the security track, and I'm really excited to have Gary Steele, CEO of Splunk, back one year into the job. Gary, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's been 13 months for me. Well, let's let's kick off there. Um, I had you on the, the 6.5 Summit last year. You were yeah. like 10 minutes into the job. But in serious, you were just a few weeks and it was great talking to you then. But of course, you settle into the gig, you start to really get, your, you know, you start to get to know the team, you get to know the employees, you're getting to know the customers, you're getting to know the investor. How are you feeling? What What's kind of the year shown for you? No, it's been an amazing year and I've had just a tremendous time. I think for me, kind of a few big data points were one. When I joined, I spent a lot of time with our customers, really understanding how Splunk was being leveraged broadly. And thematically, what I saw was that Splunk was core and mission critical and ultimately driving resilience across both the cyber world as well as uh, more broadly across IT, helping organizations keep their digital systems up and running. And while we've made a lot of changes in the company over the last year, I'm really proud of all the work that's been done and um, the place that we're at today. And so. I feel like for me, I've been on a mission to ensure that we're delivering great outcomes for our customers and we've made tremendous progress over the last year. Well, I'm going to hit you up and we'll talk a little bit more about that, hopefully at, at comp this year.com because I think uh, I'll be there. I would sure love to see you at .com. I'll be there I, for I'm sure. sure. We're going to be there. We'll have to get back on, on and, and actually do a follow-up because last year we had a pretty great conversation there. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the theme of the 6.5 Summit this year was about navigating rough waters. As we headed into 2023, you had inflation and interest rates jumping. You had recession concerns. You had, you know, uh, new technology deflationary causing potential scares about rifts and layoffs and reductions. And by the way, maybe without technology, just concerns generally about the, the economy. All of this was building up. And so as we get into the middle of the year, you know, some of that's seemingly played out. Some of it maybe has been overstated a little bit, but, you know, you're in the, you know, business of resilience, whether it's observability, whether yeah. it's security, you know, talk a little bit about why you think resilience is on everyone's mind. Yeah, I think it's a number of things. One is um, from a cyber point of view, the threat landscape is more complicated today than it's ever been. Um, if you look at it from a geopolitical level, you had the situation in Ukraine. And today, add to that the situation with China. I just think there's a lot of unknowns at a broad geopolitical level. And then threat actors at all levels, whether it's organized crime or just simple threat actors, they continue to win. And as a result of that, organizations need to be super thoughtful about what posture they put in place, the investment they're making around cyber. And if you look at what happened over the course of the pandemic, you saw many customer facing operations move digital. And as a result of that, organizations have lots of applications today that they're 100% dependent upon and they need to be resilient against whatever's happening. And so we're in a position today where we're really trying to help drive that broad resilience across um, cyber and uh, broadly in the IT world. And um, that's, that's really what is um, the critical focus for the company today. Yeah, so, so let's dig into cyber a little bit because I, I like that you took that in a couple of directions. This is the cybersecurity track. We're focused yep. here, you know, at the Six Five Summit on security. And Splunk's a company that's got a strong position, leadership role to play, uh, helping you know companies manage all the data, identify threats, proactively respond to them. And of course, you've been doing AI for a long time. We'll talk about that in a minute. But just more okay. broadly, Gary, you know, the cyber landscape, you know, in just the past year, kind of what have you noticed? What's changing? I think um, I think a number of things. I think one is. Um, given the broader economic backdrop, I think cyber leaders are thinking about who are their critical vendors and how do they ensure that they're getting the maximum value out of the dollars they're spending. You know, in this, in this um, more uncertain economic climate, I think um, customers really want to ensure that they're dealing with the right companies. And so while the cyber landscape has, has um, gotten complicated just from the perspective of lots and lots and lots of little vendors. I think there's been an opportunity for vendors like Splunk, a bigger vendor to be more strategic to their customers and help organizations figure out how you consolidate some of that spend around fewer vendors. And I think we've benefited from that, frankly. 
Yeah, I think I think that's absolutely true. And I think the trend line, you know, whether it's been ransomware, whether it's been cyber, you know, spear phishing attacks, we do know, by the way, Gary, that AI is going to drive both the good actors and the bad actors. We know yeah. that as technology makes it easier to to create threats, and then it becomes a key in solving the threats. It's a cat and mouse game in some ways, but everyone is it talking is. AI. I'm a professional event attender. Not only do we put on the Six Five Summit, Gary, but as we spend time together at .com, I do about 45 weeks a year on the road, something like 100 to 150 tech events. So let me just say, so far this year, there has not been a keynote that was not, um, if you just did the Charlie Brown thing, AI, 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 you know, the wah, 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 AI, AI, AI. So it, it is, there's quite a bit of that going on. So everyone's talking about it. Splunk's right. been at it for a bit, but talk a little bit about how Splunk's thinking about this whole AI movement that's clearly taken front and center stage. Yeah, you bet. I, you know, obviously it's the a topic that's on everybody's minds today. Um, I'm super encouraged about the potential. Now, we've been leveraging AI for a long time and where we've been focused predominantly is using machine learning to get better outcomes for our security team. So what do you, where does it get deployed today? Well, today we leverage ML for anomaly detection as an example. Um, so from a detection point of view, uh, machine learning has been a very good um, capability that's been important and critical to us. We also see benefit um, in AI ops. So understanding and being able to be more predictive on things that might break. Now, from a generative point of view, the encouraging thing there is being able to use large language models to make Splunk, frankly, easier to use. At the core of Splunk is a query language known as SPL. Uh, can we make it that much easier for someone to use our product and get the outcomes? That's something that's super exciting. Now, we've had a co-pilot out for quite some time um, using earlier language models. And um, we think there's tremendous opportunity going forward, again, to bring the barrier down to be able to use Splunk to drive incredible outcomes. So I'm super encouraged by this. As you said, I think in the security world, um, it's also AI becomes a tool set for threat actors. And so I do think the number and the level of sophistication of threats will increase. And as a result of that, I think um, all of us in the industry that are delivering capabilities, we need to help our customers prepare for that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, I, zoom out just a minute, because obviously you're leading a, a growth oriented public company, AI, you know, through your lens is, you know, there's the part of it that's going out to your, to your customers, it's being built into your solutions. And like you said, you've been doing this for a long time. Um, yeah. But AI, just kind of, you know, when I talk to CEOs as a whole, I just kind of like to get your thinking, you know, it's interesting, um, you know, I recently went to the ServiceNow event and Bill McDermott flashed a slide. It said something like that 40% of CEOs believe that their business model won't sur survive the next decade. Like with this whole onset and the rapid onset, Gary, has it kind of raised the thought bubble at all in your mind about how do you stay, how do you run the company differently? How do you change the structure of the business? How do you implement it in your operations and processes? I'm just kind of curious for the CEO viewpoint. Yeah, I think um, every company has to think about all those core operational processes. And there, is there a fundamental rethink that can occur as a result of the advances of technology? And so when I think about our internal operations, so for example, how do we serve our customers? And how, do we, how can we find leverage in how we help them identify and diagnose issues? And I think there's a lot that can be done. And it's true, not an not just in our customer facing functions, but some of our back office operations. There's ways to drive simplification and improvements in efficiency. And so to me, that's super encouraging. Like I'm super excited about the opportunity that comes with that. Um, and I think every corporate leader has to be thinking about um, these fundamental changes and the opportunity, frankly, that comes with that. Yeah, I think I think that's absolutely right, and 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 I do think it's going to be different. But the one thing I'll, I'll say that I feel is somewhat of a bit of a mistake, and this, by the way, parallels nicely to security because I think the historic kind of security approach has been we'll fix it when someone breaks it, meaning like when we get hacked, we'll get after it. And I think people in your chair and in companies like yours are like, <laughs> whoa, bad idea. 
It's a bad idea from the standpoint of business and reputation. It's a bad idea from the standpoint of customer taking care of privacy and data risks. But at the same time, you know that there was an era where like, it was like, what's the least we can spend to get by on security? And I think we saw in this kind of year of resiliency that there's a little bit of, a, of, a, of an opposite approach that's going on is let's get out in front of it. And I think the AI narrative is a little bit the same. Like if you're kind of sitting around waiting for this to slow down, um, right. I think this genie's not going back in the bottle. And I think the other thing no is way. like, if you think it's a decade that this is going to take, like, just look at what's happened in six months. Like, look at how fast right. this has proliferated. So, you know, with, with kind of that in mind as it pertains, Gary, to security, like, as this tech moves faster, whether it's the Gen AI or just traditional risk factors for cyber, how are you sort of advising in the, the, your, your team at Splunk sort of advising the customers to, you know, be ahead of this and drive resilience in, in cyber in their organizations? Yeah, I think um, the big things that are, are critical right now are every organization recognizing where the threat environment is and the, the risk that are posed as a result of that. And then think broadly about how do you build posture that enables you to be able to respond to a more diverse set of attacks. One of the fundamental things that we believe, and I think it, it really played out for why I joined Splunk was this fundamental view that security has become a data problem. Tax surface is massive. You can't see a human eye can't see everything. And it's really, it's really creating that broader opportunity where broad set, broad data analytics and AI can play a critical role to see things and be able to take actions that human eye just can't see and can't respond fast enough. And so I think that while, um, there's still a lot of work to do. I think, as you said, technology will move fast. I think the impact can be um, significant. And I think organizations need to keep thinking about what does that next generation of security look like for them and be willing to make changes in the way they've done things in the past. So we're day three here at the 6.5 Summit. So we're winding down, but as we wind down, I'm pretty sure you have a team of people that are really busy at work getting your conference, you know, yeah, uh, you're gonna. You're, I'm gonna have to come home from vacation because you know I like to take the whole month of July off usually. Okay, that's a true story I made up. Um, and I'm gonna <laughs> come back for dot com. But what do you guys sort of you know? I know you probably can't spill your guts, although I'd love for you to announce yeah. everything here. But kind of what do you think? What what are you you know we had you know we have resilience and, and navigating rough waters. What are some of the themes that yeah. are going to be on your mind heading into to your event this year? Yeah, I think um, so. Our user conference um, called .com is scheduled for the third week of July in beautiful Las Vegas. Um, and the things that are on our minds is we really want to demonstrate to our customers um, interesting new innovations that we have. Um, and there's some very cool things that we'll be launching at .com. And we'll also give folks um, a really detailed view of how we're thinking about the impact of AI on our business and how customers can leverage AI um, along with Splunk. And so that's another big piece of what we'll be unveiling at dot com. Well, Gary, as I've said to you before, I mean, I just genuinely believe that there are two major investment vectors right now for tech. And I think one is, you know, we've said it 75 times in this show, uh, AI. But the second, for any company that really cares about its customers, security has to be high on the list, has to be a focal point. And so, you know, as I see it, um, in times of austerity, which is, you know, you could argue that some of the macro factors would suggest that we are um, investing in those kinds of things that are going to shore up the business, keep your customers' data safe, keep privacy in place, make sure that those core functions of the business are running. It seems that uh, uh, Splunk is really well positioned right now to take advantage. And then, of course, during growth periods, you should get that tailwind as well. Yeah, I think that um, we want to be really good partners with our customers through this um, challenging economic time. And resilience is the thing that is on everybody's minds these days, given the, the breadth of digital systems that have been built out. And uh, we want to be a good partner to help organizations think, what does what that next generation of security and resilience look like for them? Well, Gary, I really appreciate you joining me here at the 6.5 Summit. 
resiliency is on the mind, everyone out there. And if you're not putting the security of your enterprise at the top of your list, I think you're creating unnecessary risk. And I think there are great companies, great partners, and a lot of them here today at the Six Five Summit that you could be talking to to work with on solving these problems. Gary Steele, CEO, Splunk. Look forward to seeing you at .com. Maybe I'll see you at one of the F1 races. All right. Appreciate you joining me today. All right. Take care. Have a great day. All right, everybody. Stay with us. We're here. It's day three at the 6.5 Summit. We appreciate you all tuning in.